Hi everybody, today we're going to be doing another one of these grammar worksheet videos and today we're talking about non preceded adjective endings, in other words adjectives that don't have stuff in front of them and this video will also serve as a little bit of a reminder of what those other adjective endings look like. So we're going to start off by reminding you what the adjectives after dare words look like and then adjectives after ein words and then we'll get into the ones that are non preceded and exactly what does that mean. First thing on here we have der, die, das, and die. All of them end with an E whenever you have a dare word in front of them in the nominative case, except for the plural, and that one takes an E N. I went ahead and color coded these for you so that you can see that we have red for masculine, uh, purple for feminine, green for neuter, and blue for uh, plural. So now you can see the colors that go with each of the genders, and that will go all the way through this entire video that way. The only one that changes in the accusative case is, of course, the accusative masculine. So that is the one that takes an en for the adjective ending after den. And the rest of them, we have two es and then the en there for the plural again. All of them in the dative and genitive cases are going to take an en. So that's en for anything in dative and anything that's in the genitive case. So all around there, uh, anything for the merman or sir sir part of the chart, we have ens all around there. Again, I want to highlight the two things that are special here, and that is at the top of the chart we have the nominative and accusative cases. We have that nice little Oklahoma shape there, and that is the ones that end in E. Everything else is E-N. So if you're not sure and you're just guessing and you're purely guessing, if it's nominative, guess E. If it's any other case, probably going to have to guess E-N on those. But that's, again, if you're just purely guessing, uh, I would prefer that you didn't just sit around and guess because, you know, you should probably figure out what these cases do and how they work and all of that. But, again, if you're purely guessing and it has a dare word in there, just add an en to the end of it. Now the next one is similar but a little bit different, and that is the ones after ein words. Ein words don't always show the gender, so sometimes we have to show the gender of the noun through the adjective that follows the ein word. So for instance, ein with the nominative masculine, we have an er at the end of it that shows us that it's a masculine. It kind of takes the same ending as the der word did on the end of the adjective, as opposed to having it on the uh, on the ein word. The rest of them, we have uh, E for feminine, E, S for neuter, again taking that S that normally would be on the end of the dare word. And since you can't have an ein word in the plural, I did put the K in there so that you can see that it's kina or mina, dina, any of those uh, possessive things. Those are going to be counted as ein words. And so we do have a plural ein word, even though it's not actually ein per se. Uh, but those are going to also take an EN for the plural form there. So we have ER, E, ES, and EN in the nominative case. In the accusative case, the only thing that changes again is the masculine accusative. So we have an en there again, same thing that we had for the ones after a dare word. And then everything else stays the same, which is exactly what it did in the previous chart. After that, everything is en again. So the dative case and the genitive case, we all have en all around. So einem followed by en, or eine followed by en. And again, I put that kinda at the end of each one of these so that you can see that it's it's not necessarily an ein word, but it is going to be a possessive or a form of kind or something like that. Again, I want to highlight the only thing that really matters here, and that is at the top of the chart for the nominative and accusative cases, we have the same endings for the end of the dare word now attached to the end of the adjective as opposed to being stuck on the ein word there. So the ein word, the feminine version here shows you the gender through ein, and so we just put an e at the end of it uh, because it's not dative or genitive. The rest of them, we have an es for the neuter form and an er for the masculine nominative, so that shows the gender through the adjective as opposed to throwing, showing it through the uh, noun or the uh, ein word there. Now, what happens if there's not an ein word in there? So if you want to say something like fresh bread or good cheese or something like that, um, you'd say something like uh, good cheese is always great with water. I don't know. So anyway, you're going to say something like that. That's not going to be uh, preceded by the good cheese or a good cheese, but just good cheese. And those are going to be those non preceded adjective endings that we're talking about here. First thing that you'll notice here is that we have an ER, E, ES, and E, and that's all in the nominative case there. So that is the ones that follow the same pattern as the dare word. So we have der, D, das, D, and you'll notice that the R, E, S, E endings still apply here for the uh, adjectives not preceded by a dare word or an ein word. Same thing happens in the accusative case where we have an EN here. Now we have the N, E, S, E pattern that we had before. Not surprisingly, the dative case does the same thing. So now we have here 
uh, MRMN, such as the Merman or the uh, whatever mnemonic device that you use in order to remember these. So, so far all it is is that you have to, have to remember the endings that you have in your uh, dare word chart, and if you can remember your dare word chart of the Resinessa Merman, then you can have your adjective endings that are non preceded the genitive case, of course, being the weird case that it is, we have to use some slightly different endings, and therefore we have here E-N, E-R, E-N, E-R. So instead of being sir, sir with the S-R-S-R pattern, we now have an N-R, N-R. So it's more of a Resinessa Merman Nerner instead of a sir, sir. But that's the only thing that really changes here, and that is uh, for the masculine and the neuter form in the genitive case, we have an E-N. Now, there are things that are not necessarily dea, di, dame, dea, and so on that would fit into dare category. So it's not always dea, di, das. It could be diza, yeda, mancha, and some other stuff. So what exactly qualifies as a dare word? Uh, well, here's my list. I've got dea, di, das, dein, dame, des. Those are all of the dare words if you don't have the, uh, the repeats. So obviously dare would also be dative feminine and genitive feminine. But in other words, all of these are the dare words that you'll ever see. Uh, and then we also have diese, jede, manche, solche, alle, and welche. And those are the words that uh, act like dare words in the way that they have the same endings, but aren't necessarily dare or don't mean the like they do. So diese being this, jede is every, manche is some, solche is such, as in this kind of, alle is all, and then welche is which. Now, ein words have the same type of thing, but they're relatively simple. So we have ein, and any ending that you could put on ein, so eine, einer, einem, einen, and so on. Um, then you also have kein, which is the negated form, so not a or no in front of a noun. Uh, and then we also have all of these possessive things, so mein, dein, sein, ihr, unser, euer, and the other ear. Uh, all of these are going to be just like uh, showing possession, so if this is my something or another, that's going to be using uh, mine, and it has to have the correct einword ending that goes on there, so it follows the same pattern as the einwords, and for that reason you use the adjective endings that you would use after an einword. Now it says here non preceded but that would kind of be like, oh, there's nothing there. But there are a few things that you can put in front of an adjective that pretend to not be anything at all. So for instance, viel which is much. So if you have much money, that would be viel Geld. If you're going to use that, you have to use viel. And if you want to say like much green money, you would say viel grünes Geld. So yeah. Uh, etwas is some. So ich habe etwas Geld. I have some money. Uh, viele is many. So viele Hunde, many dogs. Or viele schwarze Hunde, many black dogs. Weniger is a few. Einige is the one that means few, as in not many, so less than what you had before, or whatever the opposite of many is, that would be weniger. Einige is some in the sense that you have like etwas, einige would be kind of in the same realm. Um, if you have einige, you might have two or three of something that would count as einige, but you don't actually know the exact number. And then of course if you have a number, so if you have like two dogs, that would be zwei Hunde. If you have two black dogs, that would be zwei schwarze Hunde. And again, those would be the adjective endings that would have to be non preceded forms. Now here's a nice little chart that I've come up with for remembering what ones do what and when and all of that. So we have masculine, feminine, neuter, and plural, and then we have the dare word and its ending, the ein word and its ending, and then the non preceded and its ending. And I also have at the bottom of the chart what kind of words qualify as these type of words. So dare words, ein words, and non preceded. What category do each of these fall into? So. If you're looking for one chart where you can find all of it, this is that chart for you. You'll notice that a lot of them have ENs on them, um, so that's kind of your go-to guess if you don't really know anything at all about adjective endings. You can just guess EN, and you'll probably be right. Although it's not a great plan, I would prefer that you, uh, you actually know what you're doing, and so that's why we have these activities that we're about to do. Also, if you want a copy of this, I have a, uh, a download link in the description down below, so you can download a copy of that uh, sheet there that tells you where things are located, what kind of endings they take, the dare words, the ein words, and all of that. So you can see that uh, down below in the description. 
In section five, we're supposed to fill in the blanks with the dare words, the ein words, and the endings to the adjectives. So uh, this one is a mixture of words that are preceded with a dare word, words that are preceded with an ein word, and words that are either non-preceded or preceded by something that counts as non-preceded. So we have lots and lots of adjectives, lots and lots of blanks here, and so it does get a little bit kind of confusing with trying to figure out what is actually being said here in order to fill in the correct blanks and stuff, but we'll work through it one sentence at a time and see how that works out. First off, we have Verkäufer, which is a salesperson, but we have the conjugation of sollen as the plural form, which means that we know that this is the plural form of Verkäufer. Also, we know that Verkäufer is the subject of the sentence because we have mit directly after the verb, which means that Verkäufer has to be the subject because we always have the subject and the conjugated verb uh, right next to each other uh, whenever we have a normal sentence. If there's some kind of a subordinating conjunction or some other fanciness, then we end up with having the uh, subject and verb split. But at this point in our German learning, the subject and verb are gonna be like that clingy couple in the hallway that are always holding hands and you can't get them to split up. Yeah, it's kind of like that. So. At any rate, we have Verkäufer and it's plural. We have a blank space at the beginning of the sentence, which means that we need the in there. So in order to have the in the nominative case, because it's the subject and it's plural, we have die. Now, since we have a plural and there's a dare word there, it doesn't matter what case it is, uh, it doesn't matter what gender it is, we know that it's plural and is preceded by a dare word, and therefore en goes at the end of the adjective there. Die erfolgreichsten Verkäufer sollen. The most successful salespeople should. And then we're going to have to say what they should do. Sprechen is our other verb in the sentence, which is talk or speak. And then we want to say they must speak with every new customer. Customer here is a singular noun. It ends in an in there because it's uh, one of those weird nouns that's going to take an in for all of the cases, except for the nominative case. So don't be confused about the fact that it's usually kunda. It's just that it's one of those nouns that takes an in all the time. We know that it's dative because we have the word mit and we have the word jed, which means that we have to have every and then uh, customer, which is dative as well. Um, and since it's a masculine noun, we have here jedem. Jedem actually counts as one of those dare words, so we have to use here an en at the end of neu in order to make it the dative form that goes with a adjective after a dare word in the dative case. So anytime that's dative and there's a dare word, it's always en, it doesn't matter that it's masculine, so we have jedem neuen Kunden. Die erfolgreichsten Verkäufer sollen mit jedem neuen Kunden sprechen. The most successful salespeople should speak with every new customer. Nummer zwei. Here we have Mann right before the word gibt. And now we could have Mädchen as our subject, but for simplicity's sake, let's just assume that this is normal word order where we have subject, verb, indirect object, then the direct object. So in this sentence we have man gives girl dog. If you just cut it down to its base form here, that's all we have. So we want to say here, the tall man gives the little girl the sweet dog. Could also be cute, but at any rate. So we want to start off with the dare word that goes with the masculine nominative for the man as the subject of the sentence, which would be der, der groß. Since it's nominative and it has a dare word there and it's the singular form, so we have to have here an E. All of the singular forms in the nominative case preceded by a dare word have an E. Der große Mann gibt. The tall man gives. Then we want the little girl, but we want this in the dative case. Dative for girl is dem because we have here a neuter noun in the dative case. Since it's dative and there's a dare word there, we know that it has to take an en for the end of the adjective because they all do in the dative case. Dem kleinen Mädchen. And then we want to say the cute or sweet dog. And so we have dog here in the accusative case, den. It's the thing being given. And since it's accusative masculine, we have an en also at the end of the adjective. Den süßen Hund. Der große Mann gibt dem kleinen Mädchen den süßen Hund. The tall man gives the small girl the sweet dog. Nummer drei. Here we have Mädchen schenkt Frau Geld. And then we have a prepositional phrase wegen and something about a Geschichte. We'll ignore the prepositional phrase for right now, but we have Mädchen schenkt Frau Geld. So we have girl gives woman money. Doesn't matter anything else other than that. We want to throw some dare words and some adjective in there so that we don't sound like a caveman. But at any rate, that's kind of the base form of the sentence. Mädchen is a girl. 
Even though it's a girl, we still have das Mädchen as the nominative case form here because hien is a diminutive and it makes everything neuter, no matter what it does. So, das Mädchen. And since it's in the nominative case and it's singular, we have Junge. Das junge Mädchen. The young girl. And then who is receiving the Geld in this sentence is the Frau. Frau is then the dative case because that's the indirect object of the sentence. So we have der Frau. Der Frau because that's the dative case. Hässlich is our adjective here. So we want to say the ugly woman. And in this case, since it's dative and there's a der word in the sentence, we have to have here en. Der hässlichen Frau. Now, here we have Geld, which is a neuter noun. It's the accusative case. It's the thing being given. So we say the much needed money. So we have the, which in this case is das, because that's the neuter form in the accusative case. And then we have to have the neuter accusative after a der word on the adjective there, and that would be an e. Das dringend gebrauchte Geld. The much needed money. Wegen is a genitive preposition, no matter how many times the Germans will tell you that it's supposed to be used with a dative case. Dative case is used only in slang German, uh, so we're going to use this here as the official proper form, and that is the genitive case. Although, the endings are the same, so it doesn't really make any difference in this sentence. Wegen, followed by the genitive case for Geschichte, would have an ER at the end of the ein word here. Since it's genitive and we already have this ein word here, all of the genitive ones are going to take an en. So we have wegen ihrer traurigen Geschichte. Because of her sad story. Das junge Mädchen schenkt der hässlichen Frau das dringend gebrauchte Geld wegen ihrer traurigen Geschichte. The young girl gives the ugly woman the much needed money because of her sad story. Nummer 4. Blank, blank, Band spielt blank Musik. So all we really need to know here is that we have Band spielt Musik. Band plays music. Now we want to say the new band plays great music. So, gender of band, whenever we're talking about the musical group, that would be die Band. There is of course das Band and der Band, but those are the wrong ones for this particular sentence. So, die Band, the band. Since it's in the nominative case and it's a singular noun, we have an E here. Die neue Band. Die neue Band spielt toll. And we need an ending in the accusative case for the thing being played. That would be the music. And so we have here an E for the feminine form. Tolle Musik. Great music. Die neue Band spielt tolle Musik. The new band plays great music. Nummer 5. Again, if we break this down to the basic forms here, we have Frau kauft Kellner Spezialität Restaurants. Restaurants is the form in the genitive case, so we'll come back to that one. But we have woman buys waiter specialty. So apparently the woman is buying the waiter the specialty. So we start off with the nominative case here, die Frau, the woman, she's the one buying something in the sentence. Since it's a singular form and it's preceded by a dare word, we have die schöne Frau, die schöne Frau, the beautiful woman. Then we want to say the young waiter. Since Kellner is the dative case, it's the one that is receiving the Spezialität, so we have to have here dem. Dem Kellner. Dative and masculine. Then of course, since it's in the dative case and there's a der word in front of it, we have the adjective ending with an en. Die schöne Frau kauft dem jungen Kellner. And then what is being bought? That would be the accusative case. Since Spezialität ends in tate, it means that it's feminine, no matter what, if it ends in tate, it's going to be feminine. So we have here D, and then an ending that goes on gut, that goes the accusative and a singular feminine thing, that would be E, die gute Spezialität. And then we want to say of the old restaurant in the genitive case. So we have des, because restaurant is a neuter noun, also you'll notice that there's an S at the end of a restaurant, because it's genitive. And since it's genitive and there's a der word there, we have an en. Des alten Restaurants. Die schöne Frau kauft dem jungen Kellner die gute Spezialität des alten Restaurants. The beautiful woman buys the young waiter the good specialty of the old restaurant. I don't know why there is a woman buying the waiter food, but okay, whatever. Nummer 6. Something about Haare gefallen mein... Bruder nicht. So, now we have to have here 
a little bit of knowledge about the word gefallen, because gefallen is weird, and then also we have to have our endings to go with everything. So, we have hair, please, brother. So apparently, my brother likes hair in English, but in German you have to phrase it as the hair is pleasing to my brother. Also, gefallen is a dative verb, so whatever is the object of this verb is automatically dative. The subject of the sentence is actually Hara. Hara is hairs. In this case, we want to say blonde hairs. Since hairs is plural, we have to have here an E at the end of the adjective. This is the nominative case, non preceded adjective, because as, as you can tell, there's nothing in front of blonde. It's just blonde Hara, blonde hair. Gefallen is the verb here, and since that's our verb, we have a dative object, which is Bruder. Brüder is a masculine noun. In the dative case, we have an em at the end of our ein word, meinem. Because there's an ein word and we're talking about the dative case, it doesn't really matter what's going on. We have here an ein word, and the dative case, we have an en at the end of the adjective, älteren. Blonde Haare gefallen meinem älteren Brüder. Blonde hair is pleasing to my older brother. And then we have basically the same sentence, but this time we're talking about me. Since the subject is the same and we still have a non preceded adjective ending, it's still the same answer. We still have an E here for braune Haare gefallen mir. Brown hair is pleasing to me. Or I like brown hair. Nummer 8. Here we have ich. If ich is in the sentence, it has to be the subject. Otherwise, it becomes mich or mir. So this one has to be ich as the subject. Since habe is our verb, we don't have to worry about it being a dative object, but it is an accusative object for hose. Since it's accusative and it's plural, it doesn't really matter here. We have an e at the end of the adjective. Braune Hose habe ich nicht gern. I don't like brown pants. Nummer 9. Die Band hat toll blank Musik gespielt. This is basically the same things we had before with the new band playing great music. Now we're just using this as a non preceded adjective ending. So we have here tolle Musik gespielt. It's also in the past tense. So the band played great music. Tolle Musik is in the accusative case and is non preceded because as you can tell, the only thing in front of toll is the verb. Nummer 10. Dumm blank Leute verstehe ich nicht. Ich again is the subject of the sentence because it's always the subject of the sentence. Leute then is our direct object. Since it's our direct object and it's plural and it's a non preceded adjective ending, we just have an E. Dumme Leute verstehe ich nicht. I don't understand dumb people. Nummer 11. Here we have again another sentence that we're going to have to break down a little bit. Koch is our subject here. Braucht is our verb. The cook needs cheese, apparently, Käse. Mit, which is a preposition, so we have a prepositional phrase after that, which is dative. Um is in order to, um, and then we have that extra phrase down there at the end, in order to make a good sandwich. Um einen guten Sandwich zu machen. First of all, the Koch is the subject, so we have here no ending on the ein word for the nominative masculine. Since we don't have an ending on the ein word, we do need one here on our adjective that tells us what the gender of the noun is. So we have an ER. Ein guter Koch braucht. A good cook needs. What does he need? Apparently Käse, cheese. Cheese is a masculine noun, and since it's the thing he needs, then we would have to have an en at the end of the adjective. Mit is a dative preposition, so whatever is after that has to be dative. Brot is a neuter noun, so we have here a non preceded adjective ending in the dative case for a neuter noun. That would be frisch M. Frischem Brot und schmackhaft. Tasty. Wurst which is sausage, which is a feminine noun in the dative case, so we have here ER. Schmackhafte Wurst, um einen guten Sandwich zu machen. Ein guter Koch braucht guten Käse mit frischem Brot und schmackhaftige Wurst, um einen guten Sandwich zu machen. A good cook needs good cheese with fresh bread and tasty sausage in order to make a good sandwich. Nummer 12. Here we have Geruch which is a masculine noun, so we have here no ending on the ein word for the nominative case. And then we have tief is deep, and we have that as our adjective in the nominative case after an ein word that doesn't have an ending on it in the nominative case for a masculine noun, er. Ein tiefer Geruch, a deep breath or a deep smell. Von, von is a dative preposition, so whatever is after that is dative, so gutem. Käse. Von gutem Käse verstärkt mich. A deep smell of good cheese strengthens me. Nummer 13. 
Ich is our subject in this sentence because ich is always the subject. So here we have an accusative thing, the thing being drank, that would be milch. And then we have to have an adjective ending on there for the accusative case for a feminine noun, frischer. Frischer milch trinke ich lieber als... And then we have again the accusative case, uh, which would still be an E at the end of the adjective. Saure Milch. Frische Milch trinke ich lieber als saure Milch. I prefer to drink fresh milk as opposed to sour milk. Nummer 14. Brüder has an umlaut here, which means that it's plural, which means that the ein word here in the nominative case needs an E. Meine. Just because there's the word zwei there doesn't necessarily mean that this is a non-preceded adjective ending, even though I told you earlier that numbers would count as non-preceded. Here we have älter, but it's preceded with the word mein, which is of course an ein word. So we have meine zwei älteren. Meine zwei älteren Brüder haben klein ö, Kinder. So we have meine zwei älteren Brüder haben kleine Kinder. My two older brothers have small children. I don't even have two older brothers, but whatever. Number 15. Here we have Schuhe, but that's not our subject, even though I started the sentence with that. Wir is our subject, because wir is always the subject, otherwise it becomes uns. So, wir finden. We find. What is being found in this sentence is his brown shoes. Schuhe, being plural, has to have an E at the end of the ein word, seine. And since it's plural after an ein word, we have an EN here for the adjective. Seine braunen Schuhe finden wir. His brown shoes we find. And then we have a prepositional phrase, mit. Mit is with. Socke is a feminine noun, so we have mit einer. Schmutzigen Socke. Dative case because of mit. Feminine because of Socke. ER at the end of the ein word. And an EN at the end of the adjective. Seine braunen Schuhe finden wir mit einer schmutzigen Socke. His brown shoes we find with a dirty sock. Nummer 16. This is the last one on our list, and this one is actually a Rammstein reference, because we have here, Deep waters are not still, which is actually a line from Rosenrot. It's also a Sprichwort, or a, a, uh, an old saying in German as well. But we have here the plural form, because we have sind, which tells us that the noun here as the subject is plural. Wasser is actually the plural form of waters, so we want to say, Deep waters are not still. Tiefe Wasser sind nicht still. I hope you found this video helpful. If you need some extra help, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'll help you out. Or you can just try and write your own sentence in the comments down below, and I'll see what I can do about checking it over and make sure that it's correct. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.